This is pretty much the perfect meal, I think, according to Rose Reisman, because we're going to do uh, pork tenderloin, yes. squash, and cabbage. True. That all the parts, all the working parts you need for a perfect meal, and it looks amazing. It's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. This is a classic Irish dish, and what mm -hmm. they call it is bacon and cabbage, or sometimes bubba and squeak. And the reason mm. for it is the Irish always raised their own pigs, and they grew their own cabbage. So they're like, yeah. we'll put them together. Nice. Now it started off with like rashers and kind of curing meat, and it's kind of evolved over the years, and it's become one of those dishes that every like high-end chef wants to make. So today we're making it with a really clean pork tenderloin. We're doing okay. a quick little thing with the Savoy cabbage, right? So we're using those vegetables that, you know, are still around and it's still kind of great in the winter time. Right. So a little and bit of Savoy cabbage. I like when you chop up the cabbage like that because it no longer looks like cabbage. It looks yummy. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought it looked yummy before, but I'll take that's okay. Not so much. Whatever happens, Brussels okay. Brussels sprouts too, remember? Oh. You guys are always trying to convert me to Brussels sprouts, but if you chop it up like that, I'm all right with it. Leafing them up, it was perfect, yeah. right? Cabbage is good for you. It's, it's very stuff. good for you. Yeah. I was saying to the audience, it's also kind of farty. Farty? It is. Makes you go? Well, it's well, one of those vegetables. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a good punch of fiber. I don't think it's a bad thing. You'd have to ask Rose, but I always like I always think it's a good thing. I wonder how she feels about that. <laughs> I'm going to ask her later. Here's where the bad news comes in, Rose. A little nub of butter, a little bit of bacon. She's okay with that. Tracy, can you pick me up some time? Yeah, sure. And how do you want it? Just in there all like, like this? I like them separate. No, no, no. Okay. There. Oh, come on. <laughs> little okay, leaves, you want me to do leaves. that? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So I basically all we're going to do wrong. is saute off this cabbage a little bit, right? Yeah. When it gets a little bit dark, we're going to add a little bit of white wine. You're always adding the white wine. Well, you got to add a little white wine. We got Just the, save the some for after the there. show, please. It is later on today. It's been a hard show, so I can... I always keep us fully stocked. This is stocked. hard. This is easy. This is easy. All I have to do is throw off some leaves. Throw in there. All right. A little there bit of go. white wine. Now, this is honestly going to take about seven or eight minutes, no time at all. This is going to reduce down. Okay. Then we hit it with a bit of chicken stock, right? And here's where the flavor comes in. Hello. Expensive mustard, mustard, right? So now we got the mustard, the thyme, the white wine, everything's flowing. Uh huh. Let's get our pork cooking. So I am a big fan of the pork tenderloin. I find it is a very easy uh, meat to work with. And of course, as you said, it's lean. Lean, it's clean, it's tender. And yes, you're absolutely right. It's so easy to work with. All you have to do is remove the silver skin. I can smell the wine. And we did it's that. Good. So don't get pulled over on your way home. <laughs> um, we did the silver skin in honestly 20 seconds, right? Okay. So give me some salt and pepper on this bad boy. You got it. All right. Wait, and this is the reason more. why I like the pork tenderloin. I mean, the tenderloin's on the inside of the skeleton cave, so it's always a little bit more tender, right? It's not exactly a muscle that gets used that much. Okay. But when cooked properly, which hopefully we do today, the results are phenomenal. Of course you're going to do it right today. So, what is part of cooking your pork tenderloin right, Tracy? Uh, using a little bit of that. A little olive say. oil helps, sure, yeah. yeah. Right? That's what it's about. And then we want a hot pan, so you see a bit of smoke and there? And a hot pan. Hot pan. Mm -hmm. We're going to give it a sear, Okay. Right? Now, you don't want to overcook a pork tenderloin because there's not a lot of fat in it. So we have to kind of keep it lean. And I know people get a little nervous when they hear medium rare, medium with a pork tenderloin, but honestly, that's where we need to be. Okay. All right? Now, so if you're a little nervous it. about that, cook it to a medium and then let it rest for like five minutes. So once we get this brown on both sides, yep. we'll pull it out, we'll let it rest for five minutes, and we'll carve. And in the meantime, we're not disturbing it, right? We want that nice little golden sear like that, right? That looks good. Doesn't that look nice? Mm -hmm. And then we can pretend we go and into the oven. Honestly, seven minutes, six really? minutes, seven, if your oven's preheated to 365. All right. 375, all right? Okay. We've got our butternut Trust squash. You. Remember, we're using all the vegetables in the winter time. That stuff is so good for you. You know why they call it butternut squash? Why? Because it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right? Really, no, you puree Obviously. this stuff. All this is is a touch of white wine, salt and pepper, I cooked it with a bit of water even, yeah. and it just comes out creamy, buttery, and delicious. It's just the most perfect squash in the entire world. And really good for you. Is I it? I mean, that is packed full of nutrients and vitamins there. I will take your word for it. I'm just all happy that it's delicious. Veg, all the orange vegetables are super good for you. A little bit of cabbage, awesome. right? Okay. And if you take a look here. Is your pork tenderloin done already? Look at Tracy, that. Tracy, I get up pretty early minutes. in the morning for you for this kind of stuff. Amazing. Six or seven minutes, well rested. And then here we go. We want to cut. The beautiful thing with the pork tenderloin, you always want to cut against the grain. It's almost impossible to cut with the grain with the pork tenderloin. Yeah. Just cut it into medallions. Lovely. Right? <laughs> right? And then as we open up, look at it. The it's plate still, came to you. 
It's still close. It's still got How a little bit. How long did it rest for? Well, that rested for about four hours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but at home, four minutes is perfect. Got it. All right. <laughs> We won't be snacking on that afterwards. Hey, listen, listen. If you have a little bit of the pan juices left over, right, <laughs> just don't feel bad. Just give it a nice little glaze. That's and gorgeous. there you have it. Any Irishman would be happy to have that on his dinner table or at night. Or non-Irishman, too. CityLine.ca for the recipe. Thank you, Randy. Nice Great time. Stay with us.